Om Sri Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram, Dr. Rajesh. We are here today at the Ishwar Center in New York. The beautiful Sai Temple here. I'm so happy to meet you finally. Likewise, a pleasure of ours always to have some Sai devotee here. So let me start by asking, how did you come to Bhagawan? When was your first encounter with Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba? Okay. Actually, I didn't get to Bhagawan. Bhagawan got to us. <laughs> this was way back in 1968. Uh, my father was in the army and he was also connected to the port commissioners there in Calcutta. And my mother was a, a Krishna devotee right from the beginning. And my father was, you know, totally materialistic and the hard kind of person. And, uh, and people who knew me, knew him, said he's most probably Hitler reborn because of his habits and because <laughs> of this thing. And once on Janmashtami day, my mother was doing the puja and my father came and he was very angry. He threw away the thali and he said, what nonsense, stop all this. I don't believe in all this. And also my mother was very upset and uh, she prayed to God. She said, Krishna, if you're really there, so please do something today. Otherwise, I will also give up doing the puja because it's creating a lot of disharmony and peace and unhappiness in the house. So that day, my father went to the army unit and suddenly out of the blue, without notice, there was a new commanding officer. Colonel S. M. Lal who came and who took over the unit. Big tough guy, he was known to be quite righteous and strict. So he called my father and he says, because my father was in charge of the 113 Infantry Battalion there. And he says, um, so yes sir, he said, first thing find out where there is a Sai Baba Center over here. So my father says, sir, that guy with the fuzzy hair, I believe he is a CIA agent or something. He said, shut up, follow orders. So my father went. So in Port Commissioners, he remembered there was a guy, Robin Banerjee, who used to talk about Sai Baba to him and my father, as usual, you know, critical of these kind of things and all. But this time he was forced to, watch his orders. So he came and asked Robin Banerjee, can you tell me where there's a Sai Baba bhajan or something being held? He said, yeah, in Park Circus, Mr. Chopra's place and this Nalini Bose, Subhash Chandra Bose's niece, she'll be coming to sing bhajan also, so come over there. So my father went to Colonel Lal over there and he said, you know, I've heard so many stories when bhajans are going, suddenly Vibhuti will come or Ramrit will come from somewhere. I don't believe they must be all, you know, all Sai Baba's agents, you know, to do his cheap publicity and all that. Yeah. So if it comes in front of me, I'll believe. He hardly said that then for big photo, Amrit started falling out and that gave him a shake up. And he said, there's something here. Then of course, then he got talking to other people. Nalini Bose, Subhash Chandra mm -hmm. Bose's niece was there. And she was singing that bhajan, Baba, Tomai Akbar, Ashte Haave, Baba, you have to come, once you have to come, once you have to come. And she she crying from her heart and singing. So Baba had to come and Baba came and he showed his presence. So then of course we got into various science circles, heard different miracles and stories and all. Then the whole drawing room went upside down, all the weekly parties of the port and army, everything stopped. It all became a mandir and everyday bhajans and then Nagar Sankirtan, Narayan Seva and every day, day and night we were doing nothing but Sai, 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 practicing bhajans or today so and so's bhajan, tomorrow is so and so bhajan. Totally life went topsy-turvy. In fact, you know, it became the most righteous way of life that we ever had. And then my brother also attended three summer courses there. So that's how I had never met Baba. But somehow the connection about Sai Baba is God. It was like an instant faith, you know, uh, it is somehow connected from inside, I suppose, the karmic connection or the call of God. Very good. Beautiful story. So your father was transformed just um, in a matter of a second, I guess. Yes, yes. Just that moment and then that's it. So after that, like, uh, uh, did you do your, um, did you join the Bal Vikas classes? Yes, we had Bal Vikas classes. Uh, we did everything else, you know, that was the Sai organizations were doing, the Sai Samiti were doing. We did everything of that. And the later part of life, of course, we went off in our careers, you know. Uh, so everyone went out. But then um, we, we could not obviously pursue the Sai activities because we have to leave the city, we have to leave the country, you know. But Swami never left us. He never left us and time and again I remember that once um, I was on the top deck somewhere and I slipped and fell down. This was in 1977 and I fell down and down and down. I knew that either I am going to be dead or else multiple fractures which is going to keep me in the hospital at least for six months or one year. I knew it was gone and everybody saw this. Oh my God, this guy is gone. And then I said, okay, Sai Ram, let me see what happened. And I lifted one hand with the other hand 
lifted all right second one all right in leg and back i was in one piece not a scratch on my body that only swami could do nobody else and another time also i almost choked to death i couldn't breathe and then once walking on the streets of um, south america somewhere suddenly vibhuti smell such a strong vibhuti smell so i'm walking and baba's walking by me and of course numerous dreams that he came mm-hmm. it is not one of those dreams where you think of baba it was realistic dreams where i felt baba where i could touch baba and baba gave me messages and actual messages and the last message of course he said write down i am coming back i'm coming back to yes. that again yes. but you know before that i want to capture uh, some of your background right uh, for the benefit of the viewers right Uh, you are a renowned astrologer you have quite a good following um uh, from americans as well as indians a lot of customers visit you here could you please tell me a little bit about your astrology background well let me go again i was a science student and even when in childhood when we came to know of satya sai baba i was about 5 years old and uh, 1968 and then um, we also had a guru sai das baba enlightened soul we had an association of many god realizations we were very fortunate that way and uh, but you know we we hear the upadesh uh, the pravachan it says everything is the law of karma whatever happens is due to karma so just pray and do this thing you know but that thing never satisfied me i said it is all right for a common man to to give some consolation that all right this is the law of karma so you there has to be something more to it i had a deep quest to do something for people who are suffering whether physically or mentally i used to tell my mother when i was young i remember you know i don't belong to this planet i am from some other planet <laughs> uh, so but somehow a voice inside used to tell me i was very naughty but i was very creative i was a science student and everything i needed to do i mean if the motor car i used to break it up to see how it works you know <laughs> even the winding and everything the commutator the, the winding the armature i used to do everything myself just to know so it was the that sense of curiosity to know so while the spiritual faith the following were there but the great intense faith uh, the curiosity to i knew there is something out there which by which people can be helped to know the unknown and that's what set me the quest of it and um, then in um, in 1979 and of course i used to ask these gurus and they said beta in time to come you know they, they thought he is too uh, too little like a kid to know these things and all and this guru of my saidas baba he said in time to come you will come to it then then 1979 i started studying all these books on numerology and palmistry and whatever i could get hold on and then you know people in the beggars on the street i gave them 1 rupee here's for you but let me read your palm <laughs> so i saw a long fat line but he's a beggar and the people who have got basic crude line they are millionaires so things didn't make sense same thing numerology so something that is true has to be true 10 out of 10 not 7 out of 10 and all so i kept searching deeper and i used to get intuitions i used to i remember uh, sometimes i used to say something and off hand that used to happen then in 1985 i started studying jyotish vidya birgu parashara hora shastra varami hir viha jatak bhavar ratna karo the ancient rishi muni who wrote this this thing so they had started making sense to me i said this is what it is but then again you know me being of a, a science and on the age of today i said many things that were written there they all written in shlokas and all in sanskrit which have been translated into english and uh, i said a lot of things have changed now as per the ancient scriptures let's say panchamaha purush yoga gajkeshri yoga ruchak yoga this person will have horses and and camels and elephants and cows so the people were considered wealthy in those time you know he owns land owns cattle and all this thing now you can't have cows and elephants and horses walking down manhattan yes. so you got to translate that as bmws and mercedes <laughs> or private Very true. Yeah. same thing in those days there were 14 15 children people used to have nowadays you thanks to family planning you can't afford it one or two and uh, like 40 years ago there were no such thing as computers today is, is the the biggest industry again that many years ago there was no such thing as aids today is the biggest killer so with the new age with the kali yuga a lot of things have changed now the same grahas the nine planets the 27 nakshatras and the uh, the 12 rashi zodiac signs the permutation and combination that means something new has evolved uh, a new uh, invention a new creation a new direction a new dimension a new projection so these things have to be described in today's times 
like you know like i said the it industry or the new diseases that came the new sankalp technology those days when people the ancient uh, combination show this fellow will be having such a bad luck that he left to leave his motherland and go away it used to be called desh nikala that means mm. thrown out of the country today people pay lakhs of rupees to get a visa to get thrown out of the country to go to a foreign country <laughs> so the whole concept even the concept of sukh dukh pap punya and also the lab game has changed now so we i have started applying those principles and then along the line i heard of uh, the nadi the nadi jyotisham so i went to the village there in bedeshwar in south india and there uh, i found my leaf and everything about me was written father's name mother's name and family and about my degree you have a double degree you will do this it is also written that you are doing research on the nadi oh <laughs> and you will be i had a similar experience too uh-huh. so i am really interested to hear more about your nadi yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it said that you will be a great astrologer and you have vakya siddhi whatever you say will come true and people will follow you you will show the right path to people and you will also do some ayurvedic medicine whatever you give to people uh, they will get healed of it which you are doing right now already right which i fortunately by baba's grace i am because whatever i am doing believe me i never tried for i never tried to come to america i never tried to stay over here get green card i said all right if it happens it happens you know it just happened like that even the green card story how it happened it, it is a miracle unbelievable how quickly it happened and how it happened so it was all his his plan his divine plan and then uh, then of course i uh, after doing all my research and all i came to my my own understanding of things and i wrote the first book the cosmic law and astral healing understanding the karak tatva the graha avastha you know there are no fixed rules as per books and all whether vastu shastra or jyotish or even ayurveda for example i found my own research new kind of thing even with I, my ayurvedic formulas i came out i call it like like uh, astro ayurveda so there are you know the entire creation is a projection of the seven colors that you see in the rainbow mm-hmm. the and the whole thing is um, a spectrum of the seven colors you me matter everything is the spectrum of the light and because of the effect of the maya it appears to be matter appears to be material so it it all emanates from the, the seven colors that you see in the rainbow all emit from the seven planets like the sun the moon the mercury the green color rays moon gives orange color rays sun gives red color rays mercury gives green color rays so it's the whole creation is the matrices of the seven colors it's only through the prism that you will be able to see the naked eye cannot see like you put a drop of water through the prism you know the prism experiment you see yes. all seven mm-hmm. colors but that is the truth that is what the whole thing is about now there are certain plants and certain roots they also have the high cosmic concentrated energy of those planets so which i did my research on and found out like for example anantamool is for mars like bharangi is for jupiter hmm. like uh, bichu mool is for shani saturn vidhara mool is for budh mercury so i put those planets those planets being certain symbolics or responsible for certain health condition i put those ro- roots and plants of those herbs with some traditional ayurvedic thing and mix it together and that works like magic because it's a double effect i see so my concept being a scientist being a researcher i'm an astro scientist so i do constant research every day is a research and people say i've been doing this for about 25 years now and i'm still learning and on the last day that i breathe on earth i'll probably die with the wish of oh, i have a lot of more learning to do yet maybe another time so your doctorate is in the same subject my doctorate is in the field of vedic sciences which include jyotish and ayurveda and mantra updesham and various other things like i my book contains chapters on meditation on yoga on rudraksha on yantra on mantras on this money the uh, astrological gemstones and of course various other subjects you know it's like almost like 350 page book it contains various subjects so i did my phd from the university of netherlands wonderful your office you made it like a, a real temple here bhagwan sri satya sai baba and the vibrations are so great in here so do you also introduce um about bhagwan to the you the people that you uh, come to visit you here of course of course i always do because first thing when people come and see baba 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 everywhere you know like a sai madness over here <laughs> you know anywhere you go whether you see here there in the bedroom in the walking room in the kitchen baba to remind you by by your indriyas you know what you see shabd sparsh ras roop gandha should be all full of sai all full of swami so here of swami 
this agarbati smelly smell you reminded of swami of prashanti you see the picture dhwani you hear bhajan of swami so even the taste of vibhuti or amrit which i'll give you once we finish this i have amrit from sri rangapatnam so baba has to be reminded the whole time that there is no other thing like there are certain things people say they sit in meditation i think no you should be in a constant state of meditation and that meditation is not sitting cross eyed and cross legged you know meditation is to do with manan to the mind <coughs> to have swami in your mind and heart all the time so that's the reason <coughs> that the whole place you see swami switcher and then when people come i tell them about swami and some people come and ask me so oh, who's the gentleman and i tell them this is a gentle god and i tell them the whole story about <laughs> swami like and that. then they know and then they search for more because everybody is searching so in my opinion <clears throat> we have a we have a sai organization sai centers all over the world but i see that it's just the sai devotees who gather they do the bhajan kirtan satsang and come back but there are many people out there who are true seekers who are looking for truth Very who are looking for god and godliness mm -hmm. who are looking for a path who are looking for a way and direction and source and they are helpless and unfortunately there are so many fakes out there fake gurus and fake teachers who mislead them and extract money out of them for their own selfish purposes so i think it is a duty of every devotee every sai devotee to to inform people about swami and to take them not to uh increase the group power or not to increase the make them there's no membership fee or anything you know but it's just to i think even sharing knowledge baba has said it is a duty for everyone to share your wealth your knowledge and everything with others this is not doing publicity of swami this is sharing the news about god on earth and about his message on earth there are people like i'm a speaker on the national radio here wbifm 1905 I have spoken one whole program for one hour. I did on Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba, not the holy man from India, not the spiritual leader of India, but God on earth, I God incarnate on earth. So wow. you should proudly say, if you have faith, you must have no fear, because truth should not fear. So if you have faith, if he is Satyam, you should be Satyam also. You should speak like him, be like him, but you should not fear. There is nothing to hide. If you are hiding, oh, what will people think and all? then you have a false ego very true then you have no truth then you have no heart that means baba is only in your mind not in your heart not in your atma because atma is indestructible atma is true and atma is strength so we should all speak even to other people whether americans are my clients are americans they are whites they are chinese they are blacks from all over and they all take to it and they follow me when i tell them be vegetarian they become vegetarian when i tell them pray to god whoever you believe in with this purpose they do it and they get benefited from it also i heard many people went to puttaparthi after coming here and talking to you yes yes that is true many people have gone and their lives are one of them is an actress pony sells and when she first came to me obviously many years ago now almost 12 14 years ago and she obviously anyone want to ask when i'll get married and settle and all i said not for you I said you will never get married you will never have children you will never have a home she said oh my god i said don't you know how fortunate you are you are so lucky the doors of heaven are open for you no maya all relationships whether marriage husband wife children is all maya it keeps pulling you down anant endless so in order to get mukti we all like the gas filled balloons you know gas filled balloons with the threads they all you know bubbling out there but tied with thread cut off the threads and it goes up there So I don't know you don't know how fortunate you are and that session really transformed her mind and heart so much and then she went to Puttaparthi till this day she is a happy soul she never ever wanted marriage or children anymore she just happy to connect to baba and surely baba will take her and there's another lady women also another african american lady she had come to me many years ago and then she passed away recently and then uh, after that she's been in the brooklyn center baba center and when she left baba was sitting by her bed baba came to take her away wow so there are people who never been there but just telling them of baba they connected to baba and baba connected to them so don't you think we should do that for other people why just stick in our own ritualistic group why not do something for others who knows maybe 100 of people together who are already doing this may not have it in the karma but maybe in the thousands one may have in the karma so if you take them apart 
because of telling about Sai, they can connect. That is also your dharma, that is also your duty. Very good. Now let us come to the most interesting part and what I am really curious to know from you is how did you get this idea um, that Swami is going to come back in the same physical form as Satya Sai Baba? Before uh, going to that, uh, I just wanted to narrate a little small incident that happened uh, early in this year. I was I sat down to write this article um, about the possibility of Bhagavan coming back in the year 2014. And then I, I was, you know, building up this article and I was trying to say there's something missing here. I want to, there was something missing that I want to add here. And that's exactly during that time that I got an email from you with your predictions for 2014. And I was really amazed the way that how bluntly you put it out there that yes, Swami is coming back uh, in the physical form this year. So, what was your inspiration to write that uh, write that prediction? And how what what do you think about all this? Like you know, this idea of Swami coming back in the same physical form. <laughs> See, being a Jyotish, astrology is a bit not the right kind of Jyotish is the one Jyoti is light the one who can shed light upon subjects, upon people, upon lives. And the whole purpose of this is to help people, heal people, guide people. The, is the one, the true Jyotish is the one who looks for man of Kalyan, to help people, not for his selfish purposes, not customer, the wrong word, and business, wrong word, no, that's not it. So it is whoever seeks, and sometimes you also have to give it to those who don't seek, because you know they also need help. Even if someone doesn't like you, it is a duty to help them also. So that is the Satya Dharma, that is the true Dharma. So you should be able to see. So I see like that. I see the skies, I see the stars, and I get the message. I read the signs, what's to happen in the coming times. I see all that. And then that's how I make world predictions, what's going to happen with the earthquakes and, and info countries and all that for individuals. So I could see, I could see in this coming time, this year now, uh, 2014, from June, July onwards, a great transformation is going to come because there are some planets they move very slow, like Shani, it moves like one cycle in 30 years, two and a half years for each this thing. So Shani coming into Tula Rashi is something great, a great significance with Rahu and Ketu which are karmic controlling planets. So Shani and Rahu and Ketu coming in the same alignment and Guru, Jupiter coming into Kark Rashi, another Chara Rashi movable signs. So the aspect of these planets indicate a great change to come. Earlier also I had predicted that there will be a shift of the Earth's axis, there will be great storms, there will be earthquakes, there will be floods, all those things happen because of certain phenomena. And even now I see that some great spiritual wave is going to come on the entire Earth like a wave of a God's hand and some great spiritual transformation or the process of spiritual transformation has to happen. Now of course See, my thing is plain and simple. We've heard, you know, mythology, Shiv Mahapuran, Vishnu Mahapuran. I have not seen Shiva, I have not seen Vishnu. Krishna avatar was there, Ram avatar was there. But in my opinion, Lord Rama, okay, he did great for Ahalya or even for his Sita or for his kingdom, you know, gave the message, you know, of, uh, of the righteous way how people should be there for the kings or for the people. Same thing in the, in the time of Lord Krishna. Uh, the fight between the Kaurav and the Pandav, righteousness, dharma, the, the great message of Gita we got from there. But then that was limited to Kauravas or the Pandavas, it was li limited to Lanka or Ayodhya and so on and so forth. Even the spiritual gurus that came, be it Prophet Muhammad or be it uh, uh, Jesus Christ or so many others who are limited to certain things, of course. Due regard has to be given to those times when the that was not the age of internet and everything, and uh, so they did their own purpose in the avatar. But our Satya Sai avatar, the greatest avatar that ever mankind has heard, seen, or known, or will ever know, who did things for the entire world, irrespective of country, caste, creed, and who established institutions and who for health and for personal transformation, people all over the world. All over the world are his devotees, you know, not because he did magic or miracles and all that, because he transformed their heart. 
and everyone around the world. So this is what I call the the Ishwar, the Parmeshwar, the God. Never ever I have seen, I have not been so impressed with any other avatar, Dhyanara, Satya, Sanya avatar, because of his great magnitude of thing that he had done for common man all over the world, not related to any corner or any any religion, not Sikhism, not Islam or not this thing, everywhere, the Sarvadharma. So that is his greatness. And then we all know, okay, this is the end of Kali Yuga. As per the calculation, the end of Kali Yuga is coming now or has come already and the Sat Yuga has to start. How will the Sat Yuga start? With all these crimes, with wars, these treacheries, this corruption and all these things of the whole earth, the whole world, be it India, be it in America or Germany or Russia, everywhere, is still going on. Where is Sat Yuga? How can it come? There has to be some great change, some earth-shattering experience that the whole world should experience in order for the consciousness and the heart and mind to transform. Something great has to happen. It's not going to be a slow process because this slow process has been going on for so many years, you know, with many sant and mahatmas and teachings and preachings have been going on. So people go and sit in the satsang and all that and they, when they come back, they're back to their devil ways. So they are not uh, totally into it, you know. They still do their wrong things. So I don't see. The only way Satyoga can come in is and we are on the threshold of it is when Bhagwan comes and does something great where the whole world will witness. Like for example, suddenly appearing on the moon or appearing on mountains or multiple appearings in America and India or even appearing on TV channels at the same time. Something to that effect I imagine should happen. <clears throat> and something to that effect can only happen if our Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba comes back after being dead in the physical body and that too not in a couple of days. People might say, oh, you others, you know, people always will criticize. It is the habit of people, uh, they always want to believe in a dead God. They don't want to believe in a alive God. You know? <laughs> because they are happy, God, you're dead, please be dead, we'll worship you. If you come alive, we'll criticize you. I see. This that. is all humans are. So, he is coming back. <clears throat> And astrologically also with this planetary combination like I explained is such a very powerful combination. It will bring a lot of climatic changes around the earth and of course spiritual changes. And it has to happen in this way that Baba is going to come back because um, that's when the transformation will happen. People will get goose pimples, they'll shake out of their skin and they'll say, oh my God. They'll literally say, oh my God, you know, this is, what, is this what it is? Yeah. That's the only way the golden age will come in, some great change. And uh, I could foresee this earlier, 2009, I wrote it in my newsletter, that this is going to happen. And then again now, I am saying from this July onward, that great change has to come. And um, the only way I can possibly foresee is, is Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba coming back. There is no other way anything can change. So, how can, um, like you are saying that, this whole world change will happen and something miraculous will happen. But why can't Swami come in some other form? Like, why, why do you believe it has to be uh, the return of Sati Sai Baba in the same form that we have seen him before? Okay. For one thing, in my opinion, Prema Sai has already taken birth. He is one year old now. He is still a baby. He needs time to groom, needs time to grow to be able to uh, be able to reach out to people. So he is there, you know, stand by in, in like being groomed over there. There is this thing. God is one. He is, you know, ananta, infinite, powerful. He can come in multiple forms and at the same time. He doesn't have to be, it's not like one avatar has got a quota. He can only have these powers in the other body he cannot have. He can be anywhere in, in ten times, in ten folds. So, while that is there and now that our Swami has left in the body, so this this uh, gap in between from the time he left till now, in my opinion, if he if he lets go like this and waits for Prema Sai to take his like until he's ten years old, when declared to the world, I think a lot of time would have been lost. Mm -hmm. People would slip down again from their spirituality. Mm -hmm. That momentum of Sai message is going to stop. All the Sai devotees like you and me and many others who believe, they will still believe. But we are not worried about you and me. We are worried about all those people who are not any devotees. Forget about Swami devotees, who are corrupt people, who are evil people, Very who true. are wrong people, wrongdoers, who may 
press a button and, and a nuclear bomb will go. Swami has already saved the earth, planet earth from collapsing twice, taking it on his body so the earth doesn't break. So now it's time to change that. Time to change the, the whole Maya of evil. That's the only way and that's why he said, I have not come to destroy. I have come to transform out of love, giving them wisdom and understanding. So he has to come in the form that people know him, in the form that he gave us the message, in the form that we love him. And the other form, of course, when it comes, comes. But uh, I've been given message in many ways. And Baba, he also gave me the message. Many others have also been given the message. Wait, I'm coming. So, did you have any dreams or visions about Swami's return? Yes, I had many dreams and visions and uh, the last dream that I had when Swami came to me in a dream and he says, write down. So he says, write. I said, okay Swami, what to write? I am coming soon. So he's quoting the words, I am coming soon. So he says, write down. So first I thought, okay, I'm saying write down, but then I'm thinking, Maybe it has a parallel message to it. Mm -hmm. Write about me coming soon. I see. Not just write down. So write about me coming soon. And in the way also saying write down means it's written. Written mm -hmm. in stone. I'm coming soon. So write down means pakka. <laughs> so is that when you had inspiration to write this uh, article about um, truth, God coming back in the same name as truth and form as love? No. It's is is not because of that. You see, most of the time when I write, believe me, you know, it, it is all message from the cosmos. You know, it's not something that happened. It's just voice from inside. When I write my newsletters or what, anything, and it, it just the words keep coming. I keep writing. So it's one of those things that uh, I know just from him. Very good. So what is in it for? What What are we side devotees? How do we prepare for this big event that is going to come? In your opinion, is there anything that we have to do in special uh, while we are waiting for this uh, big event as you mentioned? Mm -hmm. And what is the preparation that we need to do? Very good question. I think, first of all, <coughs> first of all, we should all prepare for us seriously. You know, like, okay, time, you know, there are different levels. I tell some spiritual seekers also. There are levels that Swami leaves people to. There are some people who will only do bhajan kirtan, you know, their weekly thing, okay, come back, be good, do your bhajan kirtan, which is good for them. You know, instead of wasting time here and there, instead of doing some bad thing, at least they're doing, or they come Sunday or Thursday. There are people who are doing other, other means of propagation, you know, to send the message about, you know, like a heart to heart comes. There are people who are writing books and all that. There are people who are doing seva in the hospitals. There are people who are serving, you know, the homeless in the, in the shelter. And there are people who, who are doctors. There are people who also like me and many others like me, who Baba has chosen in another category to, to work for him and which is going to be revealed now in time to come. As my Nadi said, it said that now he will, now he'll be coming at this time and he'll come and give you some direct instruction. Thereafter, for the rest of your life, you'll be working as for the divine will. That means my life is no more mine. You know, he'll be giving me direct instructions every day, every day what to do. So for common devotees, I would say first have faith that yes, he is there and he is coming even in a physical form and then prepare to because you are all his messengers, you are all his instruments. So since we are in the world, so each one of us will be given some task whether to do, whether to spread the message or to help, you know, in the homeless or by food or by various other ways. I think the main thing is, the main thing is uh, why why is there so much of faith? Why are there are crimes? Why are there are hatred? Why are there are wars? Because people have lost faith in spirituality. People have lost faith in God. You see, even in India, people do some wrongs and all, but sometimes, oh no, 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 God will you know, say better not to do this. So sometimes, even that momentary instinct, they withdraw from doing something wrong. Oh, God is watching, you know. Or like some people you see in North India, and oh, today is Tuesday, I won't eat chicken. Or Saturday I won't eat chicken. Other days they keep slaughtering. So <laughs> that is also wrong. Every day is a day of God. You know, and of course ahimsa, non-violence. You must have compassion and care for even for those animals. They are there for their own karma and purpose, not for you to chop them and eat. God says, give up, uh, you know, sacrifice the animal. 
you know, animal inside you, not the animals, goats and chickens yes, and sheep. Yes. So the message is misinterpreted and applied. So I think to, to spread even this part of it, the true meaning of the message, you know, what the spiritual path is, to make people spiritual again, to think of God again, to connect to God again, they can start doing the groundwork. I think it's just like students sitting in a class, okay, waiting for the teacher to come. Everybody on the desk, okay, silence, take out their notebooks, take out their pencils and wait. So we should be doing that. Wonderful. So in this, we have only a few months left as per your uh, calculation, astrology calculations and everything. And you also mentioned that some destruction, some destructive force is going to come. Yes. And what is that we need to do? apart from praying to Bhagawan to save this world and Samastha Loga Sugno Bhavantu, apart from that, what is that we need to do um, like, to prepare for this, um, like if, if there is a destruction, or is there anything that we need to plan or prepare physically? Well, I think many people have written many things, the end of the world in 2012, about some great things coming and New York City going to cr come crashing down, and this is going to happen, that is going to happen. <clears throat> and I tell people, don't worry, nothing will happen. First of all, you have to have that faith that okay. you belong to sign. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. And at all time, reside in sign. In his, you have him in, his, in your heart, in your mind and everything. And Baba has said, he's proved it. That my devotees will not get affected, no matter what. Of course, we have to apply our discrimination, our buddhi and practical senses, whatever we have to do. So there are times, like even in the month of March now, this uh, Mangal, Mars and Saturn coming into conjunction with Tula Rashi and with Rahu and Ketu, they will also create some earthquakes, they are also going to create some, some difficult storm and things like that. And then later part of the year again, you know, August, September again. So the situation is going to come, it has already happened also in the recent past, where it is going to have some great impact and I have written in my earlier newsletters is going to change the geography of earth in some places and when last I had written there's going to be a huge storm is going to Japan was shifted by nine miles remember with the tsunami mm -hmm. so there are going to be those kind of things and amidst the thunder showers and storms and lightning and floods and all you know that is when you know he will appear and uh, and that destruction a lot of it is like nature which and the disbalance of nature is created by man by the way not because of Shiva dancing or anything like that. It is because of earth has been dug out mm -hmm. of minerals and oils and things like that. Earth has become hollow. You know, there is yes. the, the pressure mm -hmm. is there on earth, on any sphere that is in the thing. So the, it is earth they experience collapsing forces, mm -hmm. you know, because inside is hollow. Yes. So obviously they are bound to be earthquakes, they are bound to be volcanoes erupting and the, and the pressure level is going to change, you know, which is the air goes from low pressure to high pressure, thereby a storm coming. And, and uh, so a lot of things have been changing on earth, which is man-made. And Baba has, as I said earlier, I'm repeating, emphasizing, twice the earth would have been destroyed, Baba saved it. And now, yes. the mm -hmm. third time, Baba is coming to save earth itself. And earth links itself, humanity itself, to change all that. And then only the, the new age, the golden age, will come when people will give up all the vices, all the bad, this thing and everything. Because see, no matter how big you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how powerful you are and what a great man you are, but when you come to a crisis time, everybody will say, Oh God, Oh God save me. That will be the last word and the first word that comes to you. When you yes, know when you are yes. at the dead end, then you won't say, Oh Bush or Obama or so and so, no, you will say, Oh God only. Exactly. So this is the human instinct. So only such an event can make people turn around and, you know, pray to God and think of God, yes. right? So that's, yeah. uh, that's one because of the reasons. That's the true call of the soul. So far man lives in ahanka, in his mind and ego and wrong judgment, wrong assessment, misplaced judgment. But the, but the call of the soul, his soul always, Atma always calls for the Paramatma. Wow. It was such a great experience talking to you, Dr. Ragesh. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for narrating your wonderful story and sharing your insights on the topic of the imminent reappearance of our dear Lord. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to end this with? Any message that you would like to give to the viewers? Please go ahead. My message to viewers is this. 
you know have firm faith in bhagwan and uh, and yes if baba says i look to you as you look to me so one thing i would like to add in this people say oh, he's guru or oh, he's sad guru he's holy man no if you look to him as a guru he'll be like a guru if you look like a holy man he'll be like like a holy man if you look to him like a god then he will be god so look to him as god and nothing else and he will be god wow such a wonderful message it's such a great pleasure with to be with you dr rajesh thank you so much once again thank you and jay saira jay saira the real purpose is now come so so what baba was just preparing us by you know doing bhajans and kirtans and right values and all but the actual activity the action you know for to work for him we are his sena his prem sena his love love army and we are going to do the real work but we have to talk we have to inspire people encourage people and help people and transform people so the real purpose of the satyug of the transformation is going to be through us he is going to of course be the one who gives the universal vision but we are the ones who are going to work so he gave a message in 85 your your my mission has begun your mission of your life has begun and i'll be working through each one of you you know to fulfill my purpose and all this message was given long back and the whole thing is in the shape of baba the whole print out of that so that message was given to me in 1985 and then of course lots have happened since then so many times baba has come given so many messages i think that the real time has come now.